2021 Monroe County Board of Commissioners meeting to order. If you would join me in a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This one announcement our effervescent uh, chairman is on vacation, but she's on the phone, so. Since it's difficult to transact business with her on the phone, she has me to take over in this uh, instance. So there we go. Uh, first item on the agenda is public comments on items that are on the agenda. I understand Mr. Reese would like to say something. Yes. Uh, thank you for accepting that. Uh, I'm Bill Reese, uh, president of East Stroud Referral Council. My associate, uh, other board councilor, Murray Mullen, is here. Uh, we've been instructed just to come and rightfully so, but thank you for the uh, item number six, uh, approval request for the borough 100,000 demolition fund uh, towards the demolition of IBW property on Birch Street. It's been an ongoing thing, and uh, we've done our EPA uh, clearance and everything, and it's going to have this demolition. It'll make it more viable for it to get back on the tax rolls, et cetera. So we're here to thank you for that. And uh, it's been an ongoing project for years. I don't know how many years, but many, many years. And uh, hopefully that uh, this will make it more viable for the upcoming uh, businesses and tax rolls, et cetera. So again, thank you very much. You're welcome, Bill. This doesn't fall into the category of the train is coming, but it's close. Yeah, it's close. Yeah, it probably might be an attraction, another attraction as well so again thank you very much do you have any time frame on this uh not no <laughs> i know there are people out there wanting and they're looking and uh it, it's an ongoing process and uh so oh well, we're happy that the money will be used and for that purpose <laughs> yeah. well, do you plan to take the building down prior to sale yes 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 all that will and time frame is obviously the sooner the better. Yeah. So well, I'm sure the cost is greater than a hundred thousand. So yeah. Well, there's a lot of steel, et cetera, that could probably be reclaimed. I don't know how that'll work out. Yeah. That's right. So yeah. But it's a it's a haven for not so good things happening, et cetera. The police have to go over there repeatedly uh to evict the unwanted, et cetera. So uh the train tracks, of course, go right by it. So, uh, so again, good news. I thank you so You're much. Welcome. Is there any other public comment? Hearing none, let's move on to the agenda. May I hear a motion to approve the minutes of the uh, July 21st, 2021 commissioners meeting? So moved. I'll second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Proclamations and certificates. May I hear a motion to provide a proclamation to Connor Matthew Haight, who's going to, uh, who probably has already, but is going to be recognized for his Eagle Scout achievement? So moved. I'll second, second that. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. New business. May I hear a motion to approve the personnel? Item number one, both the agenda and request to work additional hours. So moved. I'll second, second. that. Sure. Under discussion. Go ahead. No, I'm just reading because I wasn't at this for the first time. Uh, is, this, is this normal in the summer that they need overtime? Is it a, every year this is like? It is normal at this time. Um, you have 
in the treasurer's office, you have hunting license that are starting to come out. Okay. Yeah. Assessment offices. We have um, appeals that are coming up that were due the first of August. Okay. And tax claim, they have a sale coming. Yeah, but to make it short, though, it has nothing to do with crime rising. No, nope. our sheriff's deputies crime. work. They deliver warrants and they do security at the courthouse. Uh, the clerks are processing papers, and security is just the we have 24 hour security at the courthouse. So it has nothing to do with crime or anything negative. Okay, thank you. So, just to, just to add on to that, based on what we are seeing, the crime rates skyrocketing, especially in democratic states. Why are you, you are you? Do you have facts for Monroe County? This is my question. This is what I'm going to ask. Mm -hmm. So based on what we have heard on the news, right. is this county on the alert or is ready for action if crime rate does go up in this county? Our county has is serviced by three police departments, or actually four, including Delaware Water Gap and Pennsylvania State Police. Okay. They are tuned in to when we were having um, like January 6th, for example, we were on alert in case people came to the courthouse. Uh, whenever there is any other kind of uh, you know, incident throughout the country, they get reports. We have Pocono Mountain Police Department, Pocono Mountain Regional, and SARP, and Delaware Water Gap has a police department. <clears throat> you can go to any one of those municipalities to go to one of their meetings, and we also serviced by PSP, Pennsylvania State Police. Our no, county. My question is, we do have them on readiness. They are always. They are always on readiness, and to be honest with you, most of our calls in Monroe County are domestic relations calls, and not necessarily crime calls. The other thing to keep in mind is, uh, unlike other states where the sheriff is the, the main enforcer of speed limits and things like that. The sheriff's office primarily is responsible for the security of the courthouse, the security of the judiciary, and the transportation of prisoners from the correctional facility to hearings and trials and so forth that they're involved in. So they rarely have any uh, true responsibility for, as you call it, crime in general throughout the community. So we're a commonwealth, so that's why we're set up like that. Most of the power is at the township level, and so that's how the police are taking it. I believe that's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And I hear a motion to approve uh, item two. A through C, electronic financial transactions, the ratification thereof. So moved. I'll second. second that. Is there any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 How about travel authorization? May I hear a motion to approve or ratify travel authorizations that are listed in uh, item 3A and more detailed in the report associated with the agenda? So moved. I'll mm -hmm. second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Under Monroe County Children and Youth, may I hear a motion to approve items 4A, B, and C? So moved. I'll second. second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. May I hear a motion to approve the items uh, under 5A through Q? So moved. I'll second that. Is there any discussion? I'd like to comment on two items. One is uh, item Q, which is uh, the uh, list of approved vendors for the county. And that's uh, 53, which is uh, an unusually large number. The vast majority of those people are landlords that are getting payments through the emergency rental assistance program uh, because their their tenants are behind on rent payments and 
in some instances of uh, utility payments. I don't think I didn't see any utility providers on there, but there have been uh, payments made to Metropolitan Edison, PPNL, uh, and uh, water and sewer companies, gas companies. So this is all part of an $11 million grant that we got to uh, provide uh, respite for those who were behind because of COVID. Uh, the, as I said, the grant is approximately $11 million. And the last report that we got uh, just Monday was that our disbursements so far have been in the range of uh, uh, two and a half to $3 million. Yes, ma'am. What criteria is used to determine if it was because of COVID? individual case. I don't know that there is a great deal. Essentially, if you're behind, the assumption of the grantee is that it was because of COVID. But uh, uh, you might have heard that the uh, eviction that was supposed to have happened July 31st has now been extended through, I think, October of yeah, this year. Yeah. And, uh, we believe that the uh, people in Monroe County will certainly have need of the total $11 million, although it's been slow getting out, uh, getting the program off the ground, largely because of the need to do some of this stuff electronically and the difficulty in some cases of getting tenants to uh, be in the system to the extent where they can make those submissions electronically. We have put out over $4 million. Is it $4 million now? Okay, $4 million out of the $11 million, uh, with, uh, with a lot more to come. And if you follow the agendas, not that I think many of you have, but if you follow them, the number of uh, new vendors is picking up over time. So I don't know that it will continue to escalate, but uh, we're doing our best to get the money in the hands of the landlords who have been waiting for payment for people who ostensibly were impacted by COVID. The other comment I'll make is on item K. Uh, this is uh, uh, once a year. One second, we'll get... This is a once a year uh, situation where we have to renew our health care for our employees. And uh, this year for knock on wood, the third year in a row, I would say we have had no increases. Our increase this year was about $10,000, but on a budget of about a million and a half, it's essentially uh, a non-starter. So I attribute that to a number of things, the problem one of which is uh, our employees' knowledge of the fact that how they use their health care benefits influences what they will pay going forward. I mean, I'm going back to history, but uh, when I was first elected, we had uh, one person who used the emergency room as though it was his primary or her primary position eight or nine times during the year. Well, an emergency room visit is very, very expensive compared to an, a visit to one's primary caregiver. So if I have the flu or cold or sniffles uh, uh, and I go to the emergency room, it's pretty expensive. We've implemented policies to cut down on that flagrant use of, of that approach. And finally, uh, our employees are realizing that uh, if they're wise in using health care, perhaps the cost won't escalate the way it has in the private sector. The other thing that we've done, and this is uh, five or six years, we've got a, a, a call a doc, if you will, where, and I've used it three or four times only ever for tick. I get a tick on me and I'm somewhat worried about the possibility of getting Lyme disease. So I call this call a doc. I explain my symptoms. He, she makes a prescription or makes a call to the pharmacy. I go and pick up my prescription. That can be used by our employees and their families for any uh, thing that uh, any health event that, that affects them. And uh, the first item that you hear, if this is an emergency, when you make the call, if this is an emergency, hang up and you know, either go to the emergency room, call 911, et cetera, et cetera. 
So that too has helped, I think, tear down some of the expenses that we've uh, we've seen uh, in healthcare. But it's a very expensive part of our budget, and if we can control it, which I would say that we have controlled it, uh, it's uh, it's certainly good for the uh, county treasury. Was there a question or a comment? I was just going to make a comment, excuse me, about the 11 million that we have taken. That has come from our state. I take it. The federal from, grant. So a federal grant came from them. So that 11 million federal grant comes back somewhere on our future because, and I'm not opposed to helping those who are not receiving their rent or those who cannot pay their rent, but just to remember that it's all about jobs, it's all about working. We can't work because we can't, we have to get vaccinated. I'm just going down to the terrible part right here, but. It's all money that's coming back on our children and our grandchildren. That's all I want to say. So we we sit around and not to get too far off the, the topic, but there's an eleven million dollar uh, grant there. Last year we received a slightly over fifteen million dollar grant. We used it for subsidizing businesses that were closed for 501c3 organizations or we gave money to school districts we gave money uh, throughout the community we did uh, also use some of the money within the county to make sure we were better prepared in case there is another emergency lord only knows whether we might be in the beginning of that now but there's another 15 million dollars uh, we have uh, right now $33 million that has come to us that uh, uh, we don't even have the details yet on how that money can be used. We know that uh, broadband expansion is part of it. So there's another 33. The school districts have received somewhere around $50 million of, of grant money, and the municipalities throughout Monroe County. No, I understand that, sir. The problem is, is the more we take, the more we have to give back. That's I was just being long-winded and saying add another $17 no, million dollars to that. Because we're just one county. The question comes back of who is ever going to pay for this. Exactly. That's, 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 that's what I'm trying making. to say. Oh, here we go. That's what, thank you, sir. That's what I'm trying to say. Who is going to pay for it? Our children, their grandchildren, their grandchildren. That is correct. Thank you, sir, for saying that. But, uh, you know, up here. Uh, I had problems going back to Swiss Moore in the hospital five, six times, begging for help. Pressure in my neck, pain, whatever. Uh, a neurologist, I'm sure. You need an MRI. Let me take an MRI and lay it down flat so they can't breathe. Did they take the MRI, find out what's wrong? Five times in the hospital. One time they one time they gave me three, four panels at the same time and said, look at it, he said, he's breathing. And he's got time to go home. Literally threw me out of the hospital. I had to go to my New York doctor before I moved up here. The New York doctor left. He said, Are these people nuts? They sent me for an MRI and they found out the problem. I made a dish against my core, spinal cord, losing control. Five times up here. This is the healthcare system, guys. Maybe people should be looking into that. Instead of being, you know, one time they can settle this. That's only one example. I can't imagine any other example is going on. Well, we're well off the topic of the agenda here. So that's okay. We're here to help you. We're here to yeah, help you. You're talking about health sports and whatever. Yeah, but there, there are also things that the county has responsibility for and the county doesn't have responsibility for. We're, we're challenged all the time with why don't you fill in the blank, start more recreation programs, start more hospitals, get more this, that, and the other thing. Yeah. I hate to be the one that says that's not our responsibility, but we have a yeoman's job of keeping track and doing what we're supposed to without going outside of it. So well, we're trying to help you with the court that it might not be in your in your, your field or category, but you could go back to the people and say, uh, we've had very, very pointed discussions with both healthcare systems during this COVID yeah. situation, which is made everybody's nerves raw uh -huh. over that not so much 
why don't you give this guy a, an MRI and find out he had a, a disc problem, but over the provision of services. So mm -hmm. we do take that kind of information back. So that's that's good. good. Thank you, ma'am. I'd like to thank you for at least saving $10,000 in your cost of up. My question is, is, I understand COVID affects everybody, okay? Why? I understand we're accepting all this money and people need help. But why aren't you enforcing the unemployment laws? Again, not our responsibility. I mean, it, one would, you can't go to a business without seeing a sign in the window, oh, yeah. help wanted, you know? But, people it, that, but people, since instead of just handing out the money, you're in charge of the eleven million dollars. That's yes. correct. Okay. Isn't there some provision you can ask and say, "Hey, did you like according to law, you have to apply for five jobs? Right. Why didn't you accept those five jobs?" But that that's not part of the the requirement. But the requirements are quite onerous, to be honest with you, and the process is. A little bit overwhelming to the government, but what you have to do is show that you know, if I'm not mistaken, a lot before we had to show that you were affected, whether you were one of the other grants, that you were out of work, right? Okay, and I have no problem that's how you, people who you do got that. the grant, right? But um, one of the things that you have to keep in mind is, is that we can only ask the questions that are on the federal form that's been sent down. We can't ask you for more information because all we are is the conduit for the federal money. We're responsible for it, okay? We're responsible that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed, and that all the information is correct so that if should any agency come in and do an audit, that what we did was correct. That's our job. I understand that, but as a responsibility to me as the taxpayer, you know, I'm paying for this. Right. Every tax I pay, everything, okay? States supersede the federal government. States have the authority to say, okay, look, we'll do this, we'll do this, but we're gonna add this to it. Why can't the local government, us, we the people say, okay, we have no problem helping you. Okay, we have this money from the federal government. But you also have to abide by our state laws. We are a state. This is our local part of the state. I have no problem helping anybody. But when people are saying, I'm making more money sitting at home, and you're going to these places and there's help wanted everywhere. Okay? Right. And what you'll see that if I was on unemployment from the beginning of COVID to now, Okay, and I go back and look for a job. You will find that, that what I was making at nine dollars an hour is now paying fifteen dollars an hour. Okay, you look at all the signs that say fourteen dollars to start, fifteen dollars to start. You know, five hundred dollars bonus if you stay for sixty days. You know, the job market has changed, and the thing that you have to remember too is it's not people have reassessed their livelihood and that if they want to get off the, the wheel, so to speak, if they can afford it, they have. Now, does that, well, am I talking about, you know, unemployment? That eventually ends. Right. It all ends. But right now, we're giving people money to help with their rent and everything else. So let's say I was had a job and I was getting $15 an hour. Now I can only find a job for $9 an hour. We're saying is the jobs were nine, now they're paying 15. It's opposite. <coughs> I don't mind helping them, but let them work for the $15 an hour and well, supplement the difference, and that would make the money go further to help more people. To your point, there is a what's called an intensive case management component of these grants, so that you know one wonders if you were impacted by COVID, why are you behind all of your rent and all of your utilities? Exactly. Well, the intensive case management, don't get me wrong, I'm not supporting this, I'm explaining it, but the intensive case management is supposed to sit somebody down and say, John, you know, you got in this situation because of this, 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 and this, and also 
because of COVID. Mm -hmm. Can't take care of COVID, but have you thought about, or here are ways that you can deal with this, 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 and this, and hopefully not be back in that situation. Is this thing being uh, bastardized? <laughs> There's no doubt about it. But I haven't seen a piece of legislation anywhere yet that doesn't start out with the best intentions and then somebody finds a way around it. So why but, can't we, that we see these massive loopholes, do something as a county? Because it's federally supported and it does, there, there are stipulations of things you can and can't do. I and mean, I think it, that's back to my point, sir. When we take something from someone, we owe something back. If I come to your house and I take something, you're going to want something back from me. And that's what's happening. It's happening to our children. Our children who just graduated college, who are working in jobs, they lose their jobs because they have to get vaccinated. Who cares about the student loan? The student loan that our children, that our, that our newspapers keep perpetrating, that an average student loan is only $32,000, that our teachers teach them, that's false. That $32,000 is just a grant that is given, or the, the loan that is given by the government. No one talks about the other 50, 60, 70,000 a parent has to put out over three years. So to my point, the, the original point I started on, the more we take from someone, the more we owe back. And that's what's happening to our souls, to our children's souls. They are going to owe back. They're not going to have, have anything. Inflation, inflation is much higher than three, five. So that's why we're here, because of our children, because of your children, your grandchildren. I understand. Is there any other topic? Comments, subjects, or germane to the agenda. Back to the county. Um, in receiving COVID funds, at whose discretion are they spent? How? In other words, who decides what they're spent on? Well, it very much depends on the category of COVID funds. For instance, the 15 million that that uh, that we received last year. We were given categories under which it could be spent. The same we think is from going the state to be or from the federal government. That was from the state government. Okay. Now this most recent one, we don't know what the, the requirements are yet, but that is coming from the federal government and the feds have because certain states and the Commonwealth looked around with the guidelines in the 15 million that we got and put their own stipulations in. This time the feds have said, the guidelines that we give you can't be muddled with with the state. These are the requirements of what it can be spent for. And it's basically infrastructure, uh, assistance to businesses, assistance to families. And here again, it's the same, it's an overlap of some of the money that we're distributing now. Uh, so within parameters, we're given the guidelines of how it can be spent. And then it's up to the commissioners in consultation with the people in the community of how it gets divvied up within those categories. But we can't decide we're going to take $33 million, dump it in the county treasury and not have a tax increase for the next five years. Right. Well, you could decide, well, of the money that's, um, here for family assistance, families affected by COVID, we're going to put so much of it toward pushing a jobs program. Oftentimes it's Inside done by 501c3. It has to be a nonprofit organization. Okay. Well, we just gave out what 1.5 million from the IDA yeah. to um, restaurants. Now, what you had to have 1.9, I'm sorry, John. 1.9 million to restaurants, and what they have to do is have a certain six code, okay? So when you use a credit card, you have, and you're an, an establishment, you have a six code of what the services that you are providing. <laughs> so we had to see the financials of those organizations and see that they had received, you know, credit card payments to that those sick codes that were put out there. So we have just finished putting out that $1.9 million out on the street this recent. You know. So that part is up to you. Well, what we did is we gave that money to the Industrial Development Authority to distribute, okay? 
So they were that, that we had to follow those guidelines that came with that money. Well, and when, in that case, the, the IDA knew it had a million nine to distribute, but without knowing how many applications there were going to be, they didn't know whether they were going to be able to pay fifty thousand dollars of business or two dollars and fifty cent of cents of business. As it turns out, there was so much need and so many requests for it that they limited the amount of money that any restaurant got to twenty-five thousand. Now, uh, some only asked for eighteen hundred. They were given eighteen hundred, but uh, some of the larger restaurants could show that they were down. <clears throat> $150,000 in revenue, they got $25,000, so the max was $25,000. Yes, sir. Uh, just to go alongside the only question being asked about the finances, uh, I want you to know the group here doesn't care if you guys the day Republicans or Democrats or we don't care independently. Our focus here is we are concerned. Now, just an example, if you hand me $100 million to spend, I would find ways to spend it. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating, I would find ways to spend it. That reference was drawn to tell you that I understand that you all are getting grants and <clears throat> money from the Fed and whatnot. I'm sure it's nice to help people. But is there any way that you all could tell the federal government or the state government we are willing to help, but with proper restrictions as everybody is saying today. We have no problem with helping the helpless. However, any human being given money to spend it or find ways to spend it. We are asking you guys to maybe inform your bosses or the higher ups who give you all the money if they could set certain guidelines because you guys are aware of the needs of Monroe County. And so if you take those desires and take it to the boss and let them know that this country was surviving and became number one because the people, the citizens of this country worked. They had liberty and freedom and they worked. We are not going to sell our freedom with a little small chicken feet tail to sit down home and enjoy that. Because you know what? So now that those who are enjoying that, your children, my children, my grandchildren will have to pay for it. The Constitution federally states that any debt passed down to our children is called debt. Likewise, I believe those who made that Constitution back in the 1700s came from states like this. And don't tell me they made different constitutions for their state. Tap the sum that we have to understand. The government, you guys represent the government, maybe the lower branches of the government, but you guys represent them. And we don't want debts passed out to our children and grandchildren. Everybody here is concerned about that. And that is why we are addressing the problem. Not that you guys have to pay overtime for some police or for uh, the office to taxes or whatever. We have no problem with that. We are addressing extra spend that seems to be needful. I, is not. I understand what you're saying, but you have to understand, sir, that when we get that, for example, we gave out millions of dollars to businesses before. So now another 1.9 million comes down, okay? And this, there is a need to spend that 1.9 million, okay? Because if you had already received money we knew who you were you had to claim that you received that money but there was still a shortfall so that the businesses could still continue okay so that um, i agree with you saying and, and <clears throat> there i have to say recently there was some infrastructure money that was <coughs> put down okay and so our local Susan Wild, Matt Cartwright, representatives, okay, from the national level, contacted us and said, where do you have a need? And we were able to identify those needs, give them suggestions for that funding, and we have two 
infrastructure projects that will be funded from that money. And one of the things that you have to realize is that when Commissioner Moyer talked about that this new bunch of money had infrastructure, but there are, when I consider infrastructure and what this grant considers infrastructure, are two entirely different things. It can't be spent on roads. It has to be good set and spent on water and sewer and stormwater management. So and broadband and broadband. So we have we're forever dealing with the constraints. Okay. We try to work through all that. I, mean, I think the frustration that everybody's trying to express is that they're not willing, they're not opposed to giving a hand, right. a helping hand to people, but they're opposed to giving handouts to people. That's correct. And you know, I I can't agree with you more. And again, these things, and I'm the last one that will ever say not our responsibility, but they fall outside of our purview. Our purview is to make sure the tax we have levied upon you for the past 20 years is being used for the purposes for which it's intended without asking for more. Now, it's been 10 years since there's been a county tax increase. I can't say that it's gonna last much longer because the price of everything has gone up over time. Absent healthcare, which I just said has been stable for four years. But uh, that's our prime responsibility. We feel the frustration. I mean, I see checks going out to landlords that are in the $20,000 range. Now, you ask, how could somebody get behind $20,000? I mean, yeah, if it was part of the rent they couldn't pay, at least I'd be paying something if it were me. But it's the it's the nature of the beast that you get when the federal government says this is how it's going to be spent. And yes, you have to provide intensive case management. Well, people could sit me down until they're blue in the face and say, John, here's what got you in this boat. Here's what you could do to change yourself. And maybe I would change, but maybe a lot of people won't change because they can continue to operate by getting yeah. subsidized payments from the government. I didn't say and uh, somebody did, but uh, <laughs> that's the, the frustration that we feel is is the money that that we have prime responsibility for going for the purposes for which it was intended. And we grapple with that all the time. It's it's not a week goes by that somebody isn't asking for something. And we have to remind ourselves, yeah, it'd be great if we had a health department. That's one that came up during COVID all the time. You ought to have a health department. You ought to have a health department. A health department, we would have blocked uh, COVID in its tracks. Well, that's not the case. And a health department, while it is great, I believe there are three or four of them outside the metropolitan areas of Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, et cetera, they are prohibitively expensive. And we look at our, our uh, health care over the past, and while they didn't do a good job with the gentleman in the back, at least now we have two health systems. Uh, if you don't like uh, Lehigh Valley, you can go to, to uh, St. Luke or vice versa. Maybe it ain't the best, maybe it's not Geisinger but, uh, or <laughs> UMPC or one of these others, but at least there's a choice now that you didn't have before. Well, I understand all this stuff, but again, I empathize with you, but there's not a heck of a lot we can do about it. Yeah, Mark. Getting, getting off topic and on something that maybe the county can actually do something about. Uh, regarding COVID, I understand there are now at least a couple of uh, patients on density, at least at Pocono. Uh, the numbers are, are getting worse. Uh, is anything more being done about trying to increase the vaccination rate in the county? Again, we have talked until we're blue in the face about getting vaccinated, okay? And the uh, the three of us will stand up here and say, we got vaccinated. As soon as we could, we got vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And we've tried to put the face out that we believe in, you know, that you should get vaccinated. Whether you want to or not, that's your personal decision. Do I think you should? Yeah, okay? But that's just mine. Right, and what you've seen now is probably an uptick, okay? 
what, you what, you're, right what you'll <laughs> find, what you've seen in the southern states. Okay, it's summer. I understand. It's horrible in the fall. But, and so hopefully people will look at the news, realize the alarming rates of COVID, and we'll get, it's to get a shot. I, wish it would here. I do too. Mark, our our emergency management had a series of three weekend vaccinations where you don't have to sign up, just drive in, stick your arm out the window well, and get back. Uh, the problem there was they didn't require it. <laughs> Mark, they only had nine or ten people show up. We're open all day. Are the health systems doing more? They're pretty much, I mean, anybody, I would say, and this is a broad statement, I would say anybody that wants to be vaccinated has been vaccinated. It's the people that have some philosophical argument with vaccination, whatever it happens to be, uh -huh. that causes them not to want it. Not the, the unavailability of vaccines, it's the unavailability of people's oh, mindset. That. And and the healthcare centers are going out and sending out text messages to those who only received one shot to remind them to get another shot. I, I have to say something. I have no problem with anybody who has not taken the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Like you rightly said, it's up to an individual. My brother-in-law, Ramjit Ragun, lives in New York City. Took the shot, the two shots. Two weeks after his second shot, his left side chest is swollen up to today. No reason why his chest is swollen. My son took the shot because he wanted to travel to India. Got sick twice when he got these shots and about a month ago. So you right. telling me that the vaccine that you guys want to enforce and everybody to take mandatory no, they is for the whoa, 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 you all are telling us that you know it's good to go and get it you know, because the cases are rising in the non-vaccine people. Okay. I can give you two examples. My look, son took the vaccine. When I got the vaccine, he's still getting sick. Look, everybody's different. Your son, I don't care. My thing is, is that I believe in the science. That's all I'm going to say. Correct. I have. I, I had COVID. I have was asymptomatic. I took the shot. I had a reaction for maybe four hours. That's me. No problem. Okay? That's me. My wife had COVID. She was down and out for two weeks. She still suffers a little bit from COVID fog. Okay? That's her. All right. But all I'm saying is, is that when you try to run a railroad here, a business, a county, and you rely on people to come to work and all of a sudden, I have a cough. I have to quarantine for two weeks. I I have I've got COVID. I'm self quarantined. They might have to go to the hospital. It's very difficult. All I can say is, I believe in the science. You don't have to believe in the science. All I'm saying is, if you can get the shot, get the shot. If you don't want to get the shot, don't. But think of all the things. That have to happen for this to go on. Up to now, I never said I don't believe in the science. What I want is proof of the science. Well, that you all believe. Well, Twenty years from now, we'll have it. it. Twenty years from now, we'll have it. We don't have it now, and the truth is, no. the so truth what is, is what you want to do? Which tells me wait, 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 I have wait, the right wait, to refuse a vaccine please. if I am not sure of the effect of the vaccine. I would agree. Part, with you. This is global. America. This is America. The reason that you're sitting here with masks, should be sitting here with masks on, is that we're not demanding that our employees receive shots, vaccines. Um, we appreciate that. Well, you don't have to appreciate it. I'm just telling you. No, it's America. You, you have the thing. choice. So our responsibility is to protect the people that come in this building. Right. So rather than saying either you get a vaccine or you get weekly or daily or or monthly testing, 
we're saying, no, we're back to the point of wearing masks in public areas. When I'm in my office, do I wear this GD thing? No mm -hmm. way. But when I'm in a public area, in both to protect you and to protect me, I wear it. And we're going to ask people that are coming into the building to wear it. If they don't want to get a shot, for whatever reason, don't get a shot. Yes, ma'am. Um, I think the frustration is of the people who have gotten vaccines and starting to feel as if their freedoms have been taken away. Because if you don't have the vaccine, you seem to be able to go anywhere you want and without, okay, it's your freedom, but you're trespassing on freedoms of the other people who maybe have to be going out and now with the Delta virus being able to be transmitted and still be in my nose is a concern. So is there any chance that the county would impose the same sort of situation that New York just did, that if you want to go into a restaurant, you will have to bring your car. I mean, then it's free. If you want to go in the restaurant, you have to get the shot. If you don't want to go in the restaurant, the county, you don't go in. The county does not have the authority to say that. My wife is in Hawaii. Her sister lives there. She had to jump through very high and very small. Well, I'm, I'm talking everything. about our county here. What yeah. is it that you can do? One of the things that can be done is if more of the local politicians of both parties go out to meetings where people have meetings, and discuss the reasons and the situations with them. Because statistically, when people have been approached by local people or people they know and they trust, the intake of the vaccine goes way up. And that's what's been happening in the South because they've been going more, not door to door, but approaching people where they are with their concerns and things go up. Now that is, a, that is something that the local government could be doing and with the commissioners you know setting the tone with that instead of just saying we have these two facilities we have these facilities we have these operate uh, places where you can get it to meet the people where they are you've heard the expression walk a mile in my shoes i can't think of a stronger sentiment that we could express for people to receive the shot and to say but you're not saying it to people like a group like this if you went to their meeting. You're saying it to a general audience. And right now we're at the point where we need to speak to people where they are, where their fear is. You're separating their... people again. Yeah. You understand yeah. your logic separates people again. I'm sorry, folks. We've got to move on. We're way off the agenda here. This has been moved and seconded to accept. No, I'm, I'm saying I'm. The politicians on both sides should be able to talk to people where they are. It has been moved and seconded. Aye. Is there anybody Aye. 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 A
thank you from the borough of East Stroudsburg for the 100,000 that was given to the, for the demolition of the IBW building. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Under capital outlay purchases, is there a motion to approve 7A, the approval of capital purchases dated or totaling $61,152.47? So moved. I'll second that. Is there discussion? I'd like to state just so that everybody knows that the county is buying a forklift that is going to be used at the uh, Salvation Army to help unload trucks of foodstuffs. Uh, the Salvation Army, we have an agreement with them. They are responsible for the machine and the operation of it. We are purely just buying it for them. We're True. using that out of the well, grant. grant money. <laughs> I ask a question what, thing, what if the West End Fair needs it? Will that be available for the West End Fair? Should they need a forklift for something? No, because no. that's used for the that is taken care of by the Salvation Army. Salvation Army is in charge of using of taking care of it. It's like an agreement that we have with them. So essentially we purchased it for them. So basically I purchased it for the Salvation Army. For the for the food or food. It you came through a food, food grant. I understand, but they're no, not. No, you don't. But if it came from the food grant, it needs to be dealt with, with and, and used for food grant for food, not stuff. not the West End Fair. Okay. Any other discussion? <laughs> I did like to make a comment. No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Under computer capital purchases, is there a motion to approve uh, item 8A? So moved. I'll second, second that. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Miscellaneous. Commissioner Christie, do you have anything? I have none. Well, Mother Sharon asked me to comment on a free event that's coming up this August the 7th. It's uh, with the Pocono Environmental Education Center. It's uh, called Free Event Connect Kids with Nature. It will be held at the Library of the Smithfield on Route 209, and it's designed to get kids more interested in nature than they are presently. I think with the offshoot of perhaps they won't spend so much time operating their thumbs on their electronic keyboards and they might realize that we live in a very beautiful area. But that is on August the 7th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Food, games, activities, etc., etc. I hesitate to ask this, but is there any public <laughs> comment? <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, I had intended to do this during the uh, election board meeting, which was canceled, but it is appropriate to discuss with our commissioners who are at the election. Uh, my name is Janet Smith. I'm president of the Monroe County Republican Women. I'm a member of the West End Republican Club. I'm on the Pennsylvania State Republican Committee and the local county committee. I have with me uh, documents to share. In the last month, we've had the Republican Women's Group and the West End approve a resolution supporting a full forensic audit. Now, I understand that's on your term, but our organization has developed or established a task force, and we're looking at election integrity. One of the steps that we took was to pass the resolution. We've also began to attend these meetings. We've been able to sit with the election director, Sarah May Silphy, got a lot of answers to our concerns. I say to you that it is important that this information be shared with you because a large and significant number of people in our county are very concerned, upset, and satisfied with the outcome of the election, okay? And the focus is how was the election conducted? Now, I respectfully offer to you that from all of our inquiries, it looks like our county made the best sincere effort. So we're not here saying criticism of how you dealt with an extraordinary election that was certainly altered from its normal procedures by the state directives that kept coming down, changing things. I understand the process is so much more complicated to address this than we can at the county level. However, in our, our discussions and research, we learned that one of the points of 
objection by the use of drop box. I understand that within the county, every attempt to handle the drop boxes was done securely as could be under these circumstances that this was kind of a rush decision to handle things this way. However, it, I would like to know now that the use of drop boxes is up to the county to decide the use of them or not, the number of them or not, the locations. So I'm asking if our county commissioners can, looking forward, examine that in a very transparent manner as to how drop, the drop boxes may or may not be utilized going forward. I understand November is racing up to us, so probably few changes will be made, but certainly security and change of custody could be. At the last meeting, we were told there were cameras at every location of the drop box. The question we had then, after the fact, was who looked at those tapes? Who owned those tapes? Were they the library's recording systems? Was there complete access to that? And were the tapes reviewed? Our concern is that there is <coughs> The possibility of ballot harvesting, which is not legal. So I would just respectfully ask that the part of the election process that you control be examined and that we look at the consideration of drop boxes as a necessity or not, and certainly with greater security, maybe hire constables to staff every box. Um, it's just something that I think would be Peace of mind to those of us who have such strong concerns and are unsettled by how the elections have changed in our state. Thank you, Jenna. Any other comments? Yes, sir. This is a comment or recommendation. You guys sit there and you're in China. And I would just like to ask if you want to do a research on the PF or protections factor of masks. Since COVID came out, a lot of people have been making their own cloth masks at home. You love science, and so do I. I would like you to research the size of a virus. I researched the pores of these masks and tell me the difference between the gaps of these fibers and the mask as compared to the size of a virus that we call COVID-19 or Delta virus or Delta two strain or whatever. That's the thing I want to ask you. Your recommendation, I bring it back to us and educate us about the value of these things called masks that we so are forced to wear now by the CDC, whether vaccinated or not vaccinated. Anything else? Ballot harvest. Uh, if I'm all channel, is the third party is, is it restricted to relatives taking these ballots in, in the parish or relatives or the senior? Is it restricted to family or is it restricted that political operatives could go around these nursing homes, select these ballots, get them signed or not signed or whatever? How does it operate? John, are you talking nursing homes? No, I'm talking about ballot harvesting. Well, I'm again, about... for you to get a ballot, you have to apply for a ballot. You have to do the application for a mail-in ballot. Yeah, so okay. ballot harvesting is a third person to go get a ballot for an older person. Maybe that's in the... No, in no, the no. It's, it's basically... You apply for a ballot, you receive the ballot, somebody, some entity goes around to those ent those people that have received those ballots to collect them, bring them in, and drop them in drop boxes or the slot downstairs. Is it possible that somebody could mail for a person that's in a nursing home and, and, and in their place and get the ballot and help fill it out? You know, is it, in other words, is it, is it, does it happen? Does it happen that somebody, sir? I, I, I know that there have, there's a number of nursing homes with their, who will contact their people 
and ask them if they would like a mail-in ballot. Mm -hmm. They give them the papers, they fill it out, yeah. and then they ask, they get the mail-in ballot, and then they get the ballot and they fill it out and send it back in. The person to whom it's mailed. To the correct. We have to We have to have witnesses. We had an instance in the fall election last year where, and this is where I appreciate Janet's willing to her saying that she thought we did as good a job as could be done under the circumstances. I think we did to try to keep it as fair as possible. But one of the things that some of our fellow counties did was begin opening the ballots before election day. Now we opened the envelope, the outer envelope on election day, but then we did not separate the inside envelope from the outside envelope. We put them back in, figuring that's just one more step that would save us time when we had to do the yeoman's part of the job. Turns out on election day, some young man came in and said, my mother filled out my ballot and sent it in. And I don't know how she voted, but I don't want her vote to count. We had to go back through, and I, I'm just going to say it with Smithfield 3. And then here's a tray of Smithfield 3 envelopes that were returned. Now they're open, but not separated. And we were able to find, wouldn't you know, it was the last or the next to the last <laughs> one in this tray. But we were able to pull it out and count the ballot that he passed provisionally on at the polling site. So does it happen? Yeah. Is it widespread? I don't think so. But it doesn't hurt to take a look at what we're doing to make sure that we're doing it as well as we can. Yes. I say something is on topic. Again, a lot of us are here because we were hoping to be in the elections committee to just say something and express our concern. Um, as Janet has stated, there are certain things that you can do and there's certain things you can't do. We understand that. But the reason why many of us are here and upset about this is not because we wanted one candidate or the other. It's because there's so many anomalies that are surfacing along the lines of what I'll list here. And this is all public record, all public record. Okay, this is the voter rolls registration data that I'm sourcing. So it's open source. 1,302 voters backfilled into the SURE system. 506 duplicate registrations. Monroe County. 17,375 first time voters. Seems a little high for. 970, 937 inactive voters. 96 mail in ballots were recorded but do not have any voter ID in their SURE system. 372 mail-in ballots counted that were received after November. 266 mail-in ballots reported that were sent out of state. 6,178 registrations removed from the voter rolls between the week of election and February 1st, 2021. So these are and money coming in from uh, Facebook, 113,000, this is up to $113,634. 5% increase in Democrat registration between 2016 and 2020. And um, these are just things that are anomalies. Now, are we going to redo? Excuse me. I'm not finished. Anomalies mean there's something wrong. Okay? We are here because we're concerned something's wrong. And we believe in one voter, one ballot, one day, one piece of paper that's counted, not tabulated, counted mm -hmm. in a machine. Okay? One voter, one day, one piece of paper counted in a machine, not tabulated by a machine. The first statement as a poll watcher, I was in Middle Smithfield, as a poll watcher, coming in for the first time to be a poll watcher, 
the first thing the judge of election said to me, unsolicited, I didn't bring it up, he brought it up. The first thing he says, by the way, none of these machines are connected to the internet. Hmm. I stood back and I said, did I ask you that question? So why was he offering that information? We come to find out that these machines can be connected to the internet. So we, I'm not saying we're accusing that they are, but these are anomalies that are, are coming up, and here we are. We're concerned. Okay. So whatever you guys are obviously in your purview in these, when it comes time, and I think the time's coming very soon, that we're all going to ask for forensic audits. We're going to support forensic audits, and we're going to say, I, as our county commissioners, we highly recommend that you support in every way, shape, or form any forensic audit that comes down from our legislators in, in the state. Thank you. I've got about 65 comments I'd like to make. <laughs> I mean, some of them. Is it any wonder that for Democratic registrations increase five percent can you think of in your lifetime and let's say we're the same age can you think in your lifetime of a more pointed race than the last presidential election no. I mean, that's a rhetorical question i don't want an answer okay, okay. but it's a it's it, yeah. it caused people i can't think of any but it caused people sometimes for the first time to realize that I do have a vote or I do have a, a voice in deciding who's going to lead, lead our country through the next four years. So I don't see that there's, that that would be an anomaly in my mind. Some of the other things, yeah. And to Janet's point, we've got to take a look at all of it. And, you know, we do adhere to what the state tells us to do, even though in some cases it's absolutely crazy. So if the state says do a forensic audit of your system, we're going to comply. But at this point, there are three counties that are on notice of having their voting machines uh, system right. turned upside down by the very state that you're saying should give us guidance on what we look at. So I mean, they decertify the machine, right? And if the machine is decertified. Then we have to get new ones. Mm -hmm. Or we're back to counting by hand, which, and the other thing, we're a society that's so used to instantaneously knowing who the winner and the loser is. Pardon my French, how in the hell do you expect us on election night to be able to say Smith won and Jones lost and here was the vote? We because can't even be, you know how? Counting it's, it's rhetorical as well, do you know how? Because we don't trust these uh, machines anymore. That That's doesn't how. tell me how I can do it. It tells you why you think we should. And I'm, I'm just like, saying that there's timing involved in any kind of counting. And to ensure that there course. is security in it, it's a time consuming task. All hands on deck. Yeah. yeah. Come in here sometime and watch it be done. And I was not, not every hand is on deck, but there were quite a few hands on deck. Everything yeah. is about code. Why aren't we? Why can't we look at? Look at what? Open up everything. And uh, the voting machines that you say will be decertified. These are computers. Computers can be reset. I don't understand why you're threatening all the counties with saying they have to get new machines when their voting machines are computers. Ma'am. Yeah. I didn't say that. The state. The state says that. Yes. Why? Okay. I don't know why. I don't because know why the state does half of what it does. This is why we are upset. The people of the state are upset because it doesn't look legit to us. Well, when you, sir, mentioned voters that were counted after the deadline, they were counted, but they were not used in the tabulation. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Well, hold on. This is, I have something beyond the Please. machines. Good. This has to do directly with Monroe County and whoever handles the incoming paperwork. In front of just me, I had five people walk up with out-of-state licenses. Proud as hell to show me they were out-of-state coming in to vote. Right, that's just in front of me. I had 14 people in front of me 
lose it when they found out that their their ballot was cast by mail. They said, absolutely not. I would never do that. And then what you do that. is you do a provisional. But that's not uh, the point. Yeah, but so there's something missing in the system. There's something broken in the system. And sometimes people fill it out and they change their mind and they go back. And that's why you have the ability for a provisional ballot, for us to check to see whether you put that ballot in. If you did, then that provisional is not counted. I mean, we have checks and balances in the system all the way around, all the way that we possibly can, okay? So that there's nobody can go up. We had one person who voted twice, okay? We stopped, we got the extra vote, okay? Because it, it was a provisional vote, but they voted twice. Okay, what about the out of state? If you are registered, the thing that you have to realize is that there's certain reciprocal agreements that we have. And then after five years, we go in and we check the, the voters to see who haven't voted. But we are also making sure that when we send those cards out, if it's, you know, that if we you fill out the application and you send it to an out-of-state address, some people here might go to Florida for six months out of the year, but they still have a voting address in Pennsylvania. Oh, no, I'm, I'm talking about the ones that walk in front of me. And I had to allow them to vote. If they are a registered Pennsylvania voter. Well, how can you register to vote in a state with an out-of-state license? Yeah. You can't. You can't. They, had to, they had to give Pennsylvania. That's what I'm trying to say. But we weren't there at the time when they registered to vote. You weren't. I wasn't. That's Somebody the was. That's, that's the reason for the audit. Even if it is only five votes, that is the reason for the audit. Well, just so you know, what we do do is a forensic it's not necessarily as you refer to a forensic, but we do a test on it and it was spot on. Okay. We take a district, we yeah. check it, and if it and it was perfect. I just gave you 19 reasons why it's not spot on. Like I say, if you if you I don't know those people to check. If you give me, you know, names and addresses, we can check them. I have the district. Why don't we vote? Why don't we? Do a forensic of the district. Ma'am, like I say, we follow our, our our rules and regulations. I don't have our attorney here, so I am not going to say why we do or not do because he's the one that follows the law. Of what okay. We're I am a layman not, in this. But I'm not talking about the law. You, you say you're following the rules. Obviously, the rules are not working. But Something is not I working have, in the cog. But all I... I don't want to be got a turn. Okay. Just saying something listen, is not working. Listen, we, I mean, there's two Democrats and a Republican on this board. So to a person, we are trying to be as objective as possible. I mean, did the person, all the people that I voted for win? No, they didn't. Oh, no, no, no. That's not, that's if I fight fight for anybody's no. I want somebody to fight for mine. Well, yours. But I'll fight for everybody's vote. Like what are you doing? Over. Yes, it's, 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 it
all the people that came from the COVID infected New York and in their summer homes or you know Airbnb rentals and whatnot that were attempting to register to vote and implying our hands were kind of tied. Well, if they're now gone, I think we have something we can examine because 3,000 votes in a county in a local election is significant. It may not have you know, changed the federal elections, but certainly at the county level, those numbers of votes would impact who's sitting in your seat. And I would think you would be as interested as we are in legitimacy of who's on those voter rolls. Yes, sir. In the state of Pennsylvania, there were 21,000 dead people who voted. Why does that happen? I'm not asking that you're going to know the answer to that, but is that not something that we can say shouldn't happen and those things need to be taken off? I would have to know what those 21,000 people's names are. We, 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 we know there are names and people obituaries that have been searched out and found of people that were dead, dead for months, dead for years. Some people 120 years old voting. Um, Sir, if it's here in Monroe County, we'd be more than happy to fix it. We would like Monroe County to stand up. We and, have stood up. Uh, we, we, we actually we're talking about it not. I'm sorry, excuse me. I actually am uh, acting uh, judge of election. We are not pointing out and actually saying that anything wrong happened here, but we would like the support of our commissioners to help the rest of the state. This whole state is not just our county. Our county is part of a state, and we would like you to join in with the people who have a problem with this because a lot of us do. And we would like you to join us because you are our commissioners, you are our representatives. We ask you. To quote the one thing that our attorney John Dunn said at the last meeting was that we are faced with a subpoena. We cannot comment on anything. I don't know what the subpoena says. So, and, then, and nothing has been issued. Okay? Who, would issue, who would issue that subpoena? For you to have somebody to come in and do a forensic audit. Okay? So, how do we go about this? Do we as the slater? Listen, if you're asking, will we stand behind anything that makes the voting system more secure and more fair? Certainly. I mean, we we are. We, we stand behind that. But going after certain, you know, I don't know idiosyncratic things here. I'm just saying, I don't know because I haven't seen what the thing, what the statement is. Personally. Can I ask who, who handles the right to know it from Monroe County? Greg Christine. Okay. Um, do you have any idea if the right to know that was requested for the amount of back filing voters was ever answered? I do not know. Okay, yeah. he was given a right to know request. And as of a week ago, as far as I know, it was not. Again, you're, you're dealing with personal information. I don't know what the situation is or what the law is. For that. I understand that, but. Yes, please. Could it could it be something that's excluded from right to know? I mean, I know there was a request that came in that that he said this is a good request, but it's excluded from what we what we can give information on. I'm not saying that's the answer. I'm just saying that's a possible reason. Could be, but then that would then it would have been addressed. And so far, as far as I know, it was not. I don't know whether if you. Do a right to know? Do you get a? You don't have the right to know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I just have one comment, and it, and it goes back to your. I, I know that they they said if any county participates, that your your Dominion machines or whatever your voting machines. Well, like tech. Well, same thing. No, it isn't. Will, <laughs> will never Two come separate on. Companies. Okay, but they will be decertified, and you can't use them again. Correct. So, for her fact, you know, computers are used and reprogrammed all the time. But if that is your only reason, that's, mon that's monetary because to replace them would cost our county muco bucko, right? But if somebody goes out and murders six people or a group of people, we have, we have to try them for murder. We can't say, sorry, folks. It would cost us a million dollars to 
put these people on trial. Just let them go. Just let them go. We can't do that. We can't allow ourselves to be held hostage by finances. And if that's your only reason when push comes to shove, that you don't want to do it because it's going to cost us money, raise your hand. We can raise a lot of money. Vicki, I understand that. But the thing is, is that that's one of the things you have to look at. I'm not mistaken, Tioga County is being audited and they still have, are not done with it. No, they refuse. I think it's Fulton. Fulton, which is a much smaller town. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're still not done with it. But we the people like I said, want to know. We just want to know. Okay. This is my first time this past year, two times I've worked the election. In the general election, I had six. First time voters came to my, I was one of those that registered with one, they came in the door. I had six first time elect uh, voters. Two were registered Democrats, four were registered Republicans. Mm -hmm. So that goes against your, although it's a small percentage, but we don't have money, six people. And there was only two of us registering. So let's say he had 20 people. But Vicki, when you say you're registering, were you working the pool? Yes. Yeah, or the cow. I worked on a machine that was that they told me first thing in the door that is not connected to the internet. Correct. Okay. It's not connected to the internet. Okay. All, has, all I'm saying is, Vicki, when Ross Township had a very large line, okay, we were running around all day when we were, we never knew about the line, long line at Ross. We were able to call the IT department. They were able to download, not off the internet, from our Sure system, download the Ross Township voter registration. We ran another tablet out there, okay? The line was still so long, I came back, got another tablet registered for Ross. I went out and was standing there, signing, having people sign in on the tablet to make sure that they could vote. Again, where we when we got there, it was a projected three-hour delay. We got them done, and they were everybody was done by 9:30. So everybody's vote in Ross Township was able to get taken care of. That is the advantage of a computer system. Okay. We ran out of the papers for Republicans. Yeah. But because, and then they could have gone to yeah. provisional, and then we were able to supplement those. So there are systems in place to do that. I mean, it's no, no yeah. secret that learning how to deal with the mail-in and absentee ballots and the volumes that we saw over this past, now we know better than we knew prior to the presidential election. Right. John was running extra ballots hither and yon. I only went to yon, but three, three yons out in the West End, which was enough for me, but to, to try to just provide the paperwork that was necessary. I mean, you look at the election results that were posted on election night. And it was very different than when the absentee and mail-in ballots came in the next day. No surprise that people voted, you know, a lot of people voted by absentee and mail-in ballot. And it, it changed the tenor of many of the elections. Is there something untoward about that? I don't know. But all I can say is we've, we've attempted to follow the procedures as best we know them. And have we made mistakes? Of course. And you can't deal with something like this without, but we've tried to minimize those mistakes to the extent we can and never in favor of one party, one candidate or another. And, you know, that's the best I can promise you. I wouldn't be proud of my county. I don't, it doesn't matter who won, but if, if, if you, Everything was done tomorrow, and you looked and it said, This is how it is. That's fine. I just want to know that my town is doing what it's supposed to be doing. And that's that's our responsibility, yeah. is not to take care of carbon pipes right. or anybody right. else that's in Monroe. I know. But when it comes to what Philly was talking about, the driver's licenses from other states, I saw them. New York driver's licenses, New Jersey driver's licenses come into vote. Now that is should not be accepted. And that's right from this county. And if that there's that was right here, I'm from 17 watts. And I'm telling you, we had them coming. And if they were, and we, we called and we were told we had to accept. 
that they were showing their license in the Senate in five they were first time voters because that's the only time they're required. Right. Uh, no, 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 if they did not fill in all the checks and they had to be ID, it would it would come up and they couldn't I couldn't press forward and vote. They I had to see their ID. I had to ask for their ID. These were ones that were already approved, already vetted, and there was nothing I could do. They were just proud as punch. They hand me their out of state license. I know quite a few of them, and that was just the seventeen one. I don't know about the rest. Um, the rest of them. And I don't know who they voted for. That's not, the That's not the point. They shouldn't be voting if they don't have uh, driver's licenses. If they were first time, they shouldn't, like you said, you get a request, please ask for ID. These are people who've been voting and they show up. But they, they have not voted in a while. No, they, they need an affirmation. No, you, you can uh, all ask for identification. Correct. You've not. Correct. Okay. Yes, yes. Mr. Moyer, I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn. <laughs> we are, we are. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.